Hi everyone, Zoodoo here with another virtual behind the scenes episode for you. Today we're slithering into the Herpetarium to talk about the difference between venomous and non-venomous snakes. All right, I'm here with Deanna, our team lead of reptiles here at the Memphis Zoo. So Deanna, we, I know that we have a wide variety of both venomous and non-venomous snakes in our herpetarium. Lacey, our big reticulated python, is oftentimes the star of the show just because she's so big. And I happen to know that she's non-venomous. But what makes her different from a venomous snake? Hi there. Lacey is different from a venomous snake because, of course, she lacks fangs and venom glands to help her catch her prey. Instead, she has several rows of long, sharp, needle-like teeth and a strong muscular body, both of which help her catch her prey. Okay, okay. So when it comes to physical traits, what's the best way to tell the difference between venomous and non-venomous snakes? Uh, well, a lot of us have heard that you can tell the difference between a venomous and a non-venomous snake, either by the shape of its head or the shape of its pupils. Um, unfortunately, neither one of those is actually true. Um, most snakes have flexible jaws, and this allows them to actually flatten their heads out and make them look a bit more triangular if they feel like they're in danger. Also, if you're close enough to see a snake's pupils, you're probably too close to it uh, if you don't know what it is. So the best thing to do uh, visually, if you're looking at a snake and you don't know what it is, the best way to tell if it's venomous is actually based on its pattern. So do venomous and non-venomous snakes catch and eat their prey differently? Yes, they certainly do. Uh, so venomous snakes have the advantage of having venom and fangs. Uh, so they will strike a prey item once and then actually release it. They'll wait for that venom to take effect. Uh, once the prey is immobilized, they'll then go ahead and eat it. Most non-venomous snakes are actually going to be constrictors. So they're going to bite onto their prey and hold it and then immediately wrap their body coils around it a couple of times um, and give it a good tight squeeze. Now, non-venomous snakes don't actually crush their prey. Uh, what they're actually doing is every time that prey animal breathes out, they tighten their coils up just a little bit more and prevent the animal from breathing back in. So once that animal stops moving, then it's eaten. All right, so Deanna, as you know, we get a lot of snake questions here uh, at the zoo, both phone calls and in person. So what should someone do if they encounter a snake in their backyard or at the park? What should they do? That is a great question. Uh, the thing that we always advise people to do if you encounter a wild snake, especially if you don't know what it is, is just to leave it alone. Uh, by approaching the snake for any reason, you're just putting yourself and the snake into more danger. Um, it's important also to remember that snakes are just not aggressive towards humans. None of them eat humans. Uh, so they're a little bit more afraid of you than you are of them. Uh, they also play an important role in our environment. Uh, they eat rodents and other pests, and they also provide food for other animals. Okay. Deanna, thank you so much for stopping by, by today and answering our questions. You guys are doing great work. Thanks to Deanna for spending some time educating us about the animals that she and her team care for. We hope you'll continue to follow us across all social media channels as we continue to bring the zoo to you. We'll see you soon.